And welcome to New Rochelle, New York. We are just underway for a late Friday night of Mac basketball between the Iona Gales and the Ryder Roths in New Rochelle, just northeast of New York City. Kyle Smythe knocks down the three, and the Gales, who lead this conference and are among the nation's leaders in points per game, are often flying, Tim. No, they've got five points. They haven't even played a minute yet. And he Mitchell answers at the other end. No, Ryder is the number three scoring team in the conference. Neither side is really known for its defense, so this could be a lot of fun. Momo Jones off the mark. Taj Ridley back out. At the point, Scott Machado, a 6'1 senior from Queens, and he leads the nation in assists per game. He is the engine that makes this machine go. Mitchell, Gatson, and Pat around the perimeter. This is Gatson trying to make it two in a row. One of the things Tommy Dempsey talked about before the game was he wanted to make sure the Bronx were going to be quick but not in a hurry. And they've been very patient on the offensive end. Take a look at our lineups. And we've already got one change early on, but Eddie Mitchell, the freshman, starting along with the upperclassmen. Keep your eye on Novar Gatson, already six points from the perimeter tonight. There's Machado along with the Arizona transfer, Momo Jones, Kyle Smythe, Taj Ridley, and Mike Glover. Ridley's already out of the ball game, and Randy Bazouvre has come in less than two minutes in off of the Gales bench. Well, Coach Timmy Cruz has been really enthusiastic on that sideline, especially on the defensive end. I think he wanted to make sure they came out ready to go, focused on D, and that hasn't been the case. Kazubre connects. Well, we certainly have an energetic crowd here at the Heinz Athletic Center. With such a late start, the student body just off of break at their first home game in several weeks are out in force and ready to go. Well, there's a lot to cheer about, especially if you're rooting for the I Iona Gales this season. Now, 14 and 4 overall, 6 and 1 in the conference, sitting atop the standings. Blocked from behind by Machado. Lamarck Momo Jones has his pass deflected. Bezubre with the finger roll. He's kind of the junkyard dog of this team, and he, he's able to get it back out. Jones for three. Smythe keeps it alive. We talked earlier, if you're the Ryder Bronx right now, you've got to really focus on getting defensive rebounds. You can't allow Iona to have extra trip or they're going to carry you. This is right now, there's Glover. As you mentioned, Tim, working hard on that offensive glass. Oh, we talked about Tommy Dempsey, the seventh-year head coach of the Ryder Bronx, the 2008 MAC Coach of the Year. And he talked about the fact that they're coming into a hornet's nest potentially here tonight facing Timmy Clouse's high-flying club. Coach Dempsey feels there is the potential that if they don't come out in these first few minutes well, that it could get ugly. Well, they've come out great. Again, you're talking about playing at a 10 o'clock at night. Everything is kind of mixed up as far as travel is concerned. And you got a team that hasn't been that consistent for you. But Tommy did think, you know, if a couple of things go his way and if they could take away the transition and if they could also rebound defensively, that they were going to have a good shot. Well, since the middle of December, Ryder has played eight out of nine games on the road. They started off the road trip well with wins at Maryland-Baltimore County, at Monmouth, a loss to Stony Brook, a win at Manhattan, and another win at St. Peter's. But the last couple of games have not been so good for Ryder and taking on Iona here tonight. Well, the thing that Iona does a great job of, and you see Smythe right there, is they take you out of your rhythm with their high speed. Momo Jones, his first two. Iona back on top. High post, Glover. A fake. And the easy two. Jonathan Thompson at the point. 
a 6'4 junior from Orlando, Florida. Mitchell puts it up. Here comes Smythe. And a chance for three for Joe. Watching both of those players you saw in that shot right there, he and Scott Machado. And they have been delivering far more often than not so far this season for this Iona team. Ryder comes in with a three and four record in the league. And they sit right about in the middle of the pack. Shot clock down to 11 as Mitchell puts it up. Better job this time on the offensive glass by Ryder. And that's one of those areas. If you can keep pounding and, and put pressure on Iona, it doesn't allow them to run. Here's Machado. And an over-the-back foul called against Glover. Talking with Tom Dempsey before the game, he mentioned it with Iona. you got to pick your poison, but a couple of things they wanted to try and take away from the Gales. One was locate those three-point shooters, but the other thing was to box up Mike Glover. By the way, that bucket by Ryder snapped a 9-0 Iona run. Here comes the double team. And Mitchell lost it out of bounds. Well, you've got a freshman from Philadelphia, Eddie Mitchell, with two veterans coming at you, and he didn't handle it well. Tell you what, sometimes if you're a point guard, dribbling like that, it's like Lady Gaga's bad romance. The only thing you can do is get in trouble, <laughs> and against a pressing team, the best way to beat it is by passing. Well, he did the right thing not to go into the coffin corner, but then lost possession anyhow. Penn takes it away. Brandon Penn has been playing extremely well lately for this Ryder team. Anthony Miles has checked in for Ryder. Sophomore guard from Dover, Delaware. Again, shot clock down to 10. Fortunat able to finish. Tommy Dempsey really likes Junior Fortunat a great deal. Only played a few games for him, but he thinks he's got the presence inside to be a real good Mac player. Well, it's 6'9, 220, just a freshman from Quebec. And he is one of the bigger, wider bodies in this conference. Machado called for traveling. There you see Fortunato doing a good job of position. And one of the things that happened on that last trip as well was that Ryder was very patient. They worked that shot clock around, was able to feed the post, and Fortunato was able to deliver. And when you're Tom Dempsey again, the word is going to be consistency and reliability. You're looking to get someone in there that can put pressure on Mike Glover, number one. This is Stewart, who we've talked about, last year's Rookie of the Year in the conference, Thompson. Smythe did a nice job to get out and challenge. And here comes Machado, back to Smythe. Ryder down to seven minutes in. Thompson all the way to the bucket, but he pulled the string of it. Machado looking for another assist. One of the things that great point guards do, and especially with Machado, as soon as they get the ball, their eyes are always up looking to attack. Machado was one of the best in the country. The Iona guards know it, and Momo Jones was the one that benefited right there. But when you're playing with a guard like Machado, they're going to find you. You just need to get to your spots. Momo Jones, the Arizona transfer, seventh in the conference in scoring at over 15 per game. Can't complete the three-point play. Momo's off to a quick start, leading all scores with eight so far here tonight. Fortunato 
A little strong. Ridley back into the ball game, and here come the Gales. Stewart knocked it out of bounds. Little things that Machado does. You got to watch your hands at all times when you're playing against the Iona Gales. These guys do not back down from anything, and they do not give you any rest. Sean Armand, a prolific three-point shooter, has checked into the game for the first time for Iona. Number 22 in white. Machado. Brandon Penn pulls down the rebound. So far, Tim, I would say the tempo has favored Ryder. They've been able to run their sets and down only four, eight minutes in. And they've done a good job. I go back to this rebounding component. You've got to be able to rebound both sides of the backboard because what it does is it kind of keeps throwing counter punches back at the Iona Gales. And if you can do that and be somewhat patient on offense, Ryder's got enough talent to be out there and put up points and win games. Mel Jenkins into the game for the first time for Iona. Scott Machado gets a breather, and the horn sounds inadvertently. I think they wanted to reset the shot clock. Reach around foul. Storm. Coming to the metropolitan area in the next few hours, the crowd is still terrific. Well, both of these teams usually put up a blizzard of points. But Ryder has been able to control the tempo just a bit. Nice way of finishing by Penn. It's back to a two point ball game. Well, only two teams in the country average more points per game than this Iona club. North Carolina and VMI. Armand off the mark. It's interesting. Iona is one for eight from the three, but it's part of what they do. They are a team that loves to fire it up. And at this end, Ryder is actually better at knocking down the three. Right to the bucket, though, for two more points. Anthony Miles. We're tied at 16. An ideal start for Ryder coming in here trying to pull an upset. It really is. Tom Dempsey also mentioned how he was hoping to keep that ball perimeter. As you can see, the zone is forcing Iona to just keep looking perimeter, and they're not going interior. Tend to shoot. The Zouvre shoved from behind. Saturday, ESPNU delivers six college basketball games, starting with a triple header. Beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern, Maryland faces Temple. Then at 1 Eastern, Villanova squares off with St. John's. And at 3 Eastern, Cincinnati takes on West Virginia and former Bearcats head coach Bob Huggins. The Saturday Showcase presented by 5 Hour Energy on ESPNU. Cincinnati being one of the hottest teams in the country, coming off a big road win at UConn. And how do you figure the Bearcats have gone 10-1 and one since the brawl, while the Xavier Musketeers have rewrited the ship, but they struggled so mightily out of that brawl? Well, it's interesting. I think a lot of times uh, Cincinnati's identity was about those guys with bruises. And what they stopped doing, they stopped talking, and they just started playing basketball. And what they found out is they are a really good basketball team. Sean Armand, his first triple, leads the conference at nearly 50%. I saw Sean Armand against Siena have 10 for 19 from the three about two weeks ago. He lit up Madison Square Garden that light as though he was Reggie Miller. Jeff Jones just into the ball game. The former Virginia Cavalier pulls Ryder back within a point. Armand starting to heat up. Thing with Armand, you can see when it leaves its hand, the ball is as straight as an arrow. It's like a laser going to the basket. Iona has a lot of shooting options. Machado, Jones, Smythe, Jenkins, Armand, all proficient from shooting beyond the three-point line. Iona is a team that fuels off momentum, and one of those momentum plays are without question made three-pointers. 
Shot clock to six. Baseline jumper off the mark by Miles. Momo Jones running the point, and Ridley is fouled. And this is something Iona did in its last game a little bit, Sunday against Loyola, having Momo Jones run the point, while the nation's leader in assists, Scott Machado, spends a little bit of time on the bench. Well, this is one of the things, if you're Tim Kloos, you know, you realize it's a long year, and you're always trying to find opportunities to rest certain guys, whether it's in the game, whether it's through the season, during practice. But it was interesting right there, even with Momo Jones coming up the floor. He took five or six dribbles getting there, where Machado takes one or two when the ball's already moving. Now, the interesting thing is, Machado was effective to begin the ball game. Seven field goals made by Iona, five assists for Machado. So just giving him a break as the season wears on. But again, he has been neck and neck all season with North Carolina's Kendall Marshall for the nation's assist lead. And now both Jones and Machado are out. And it'll be Jamel Jenkins who will run the point at the other end. Important trip right now, especially for Ryder. They were doing a good job of it, being patient and attacking on the inside. High post, Gadsden. Jenkins, the takeaway. And he double dribbled. Had the right idea, trying to ward off the defender. But lost the handle momentarily and turns it over. Well, there you see Scott Machado at 10.3. Marshall just a half step behind, and they have been neck and neck trading off that lead pretty much from the start of the season. It's amazing when you think about both clubs. North Carolina leading the nation and scoring Iona at three. It's not a surprise that they have two of these floor generals just exceptional at what they do. They're great at running a club. Machado's back into the game now. Well, he began the season with back-to-back -back 15 assist games. Nobody's done that in more than a decade in college basketball back-to-back. -back. Miles with a big three. Armand. That's three in a row. Iona's mantra without question is sharing the basketball. See Armand right there finding Smythe. Pick your poison against Iona. It's because of they got five unbelievable guards. You're talking Machado, Momo Jones, Armand, Smythe, and throw Jenkins in the mix. You know, you haven't talked about Michael Glover on the interior, so they just hit you with so many weapons. Machado hands to Smythe, gives to Armand. A little short that time. Ridley had a hand on it for a moment. But it comes to Anthony Miles. Jones showing a real nice stroke for two. That's what the transfer from Virginia can do. One of those guys, when he's on the floor and he gets the ball, he wants to put up numbers. Well, he is the second leading scorer on this team at 12.6 per game. Got his fingertips on the rebound and was able to haul it in. Under seven minutes remaining first half. Ryder down by four with a basketball. Miles. Access. Yes, Bob Adams just came over and again reaffirmed to Tim and I that it was a two-point shot. He got it right. Like I said, he was only four feet away. Well, he was in perfect position for that one. Machado, a little short. Ryder basketball. Fortunat back into the game for Ryder. Stewart will take a seat. Ryder University is from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. And so they did not come up for a shoot around here in this building today. They had their day of the game walkthrough back on campus before busing up in the early evening. 
anytime you're playing Ryder, you're coming either from the Metropolitan area or Connecticut, you're always worried about that George Washington Bridge when we talked to Tommy earlier because the game was so late, they weren't really concerned with it. Fortunate, strong off the glass. Momo Jones at the point. Machado now gives it back to Momo. And remember, Lamont Jones helped lead Arizona to the Elite 80 year ago as their lead guard. So having him at the point here for Iona is no problem at all. It, it's amazing his maturity when he came to Iona. A lot of times you have players like that of his caliber, his reputation. They come in wanting to do everything. And he's kind of fit in nicely with this club, allowing Machado, allowing Glover to do their thing while finding his niche. And the NCAA allowed Momo Jones a hardship waiver so that he could transfer without sitting out a year. He wanted to be back closer to home. He's from New York City, from Harlem, and he wanted to be home where his grandmother is ailing, and he told me this afternoon that he's able to get back into the city at least a couple of times a week to see her. Well, he told me that right now his grandmother's actually visiting her sister in Philadelphia because she's not feeling well. So, Momo able to be a lot closer than being out uh, in Tucson so he can keep track of his family. And... Oh, oh. So far, like you said, it has worked out swimmingly. Sometimes with those transfers with the big reputations, it just doesn't work out. No, and it goes back to the maturity. And again, when you think about Momo Jones, and I go back to that game last year when they beat Duke and they beat him handily in the Sweet 16, it was because people could not keep Momo Jones in front of him. Kyrie Irving was hurt. He tried to come back. He couldn't do it. Duke didn't have an answer for him. And when you have guards penetrating all over the place, you're in trouble. Gadsden kicked the ball, dribbled it right off his foot. Sean Armand, pretty impressive stuff, and uh, the ratings that ESPNU has been getting for its high school basketball have been tremendous. It's amazing. Bishop Corman's head coach, Grant Rice, the brother Dave Rice is the head coach of the running Rebels out in UNLV. Thompson had an open lane to the bucket. He was fouled, but he was in the act of passing, not shooting. Tommy Dempsey also talks about the importance of Thompson on this club. One of the guys that's been a stabilizing factor. Doesn't necessarily look to shoot when he goes in there, but he's great at running the club, and he's been very pleased with his development. This is where you've got to be really careful right now if you're a rider. You do not want this thing getting away from you and letting the Gales get up a 10-point lead. This is the largest lead of the night so far. Ryder will keep it. The shot clock does not reset because Iona never was able to get control. But even on that, you can see right now, as soon as uh, Junior gets the ball in there, you got guys from Iona come flying out of nowhere putting pressure on him. Iona's the type of team, when they smell blood in the water, they are all over it. Brandon Penn, who has been quiet here tonight, misfires on the turnaround. Much better job getting after Arbonne that time, forcing the turnover. Tough pass to handle, but done nicely for the... Two points by Jeff Jones. Jeff Jones has had a solid impact on this game. People don't know how hard it is when you come off the bench to try to have that pop. But he's giving it to the right of Bronx. Glover is fouled in the act of shooting. You can see right there, that's pick your poison. You got Armand sitting there in the right corner. You got to come contest him. And if you do that, you got big Mike Glover in there. Pump fakes, gets everybody moving. Poised. Now he's going to the line. Now the younger brother of former St. John star Anthony Glover spent three years playing high school ball at James Monroe in the Bronx. Then one year at Boys to Men Academy in Chicago. And then one year at American Christian, Pennsylvania. And then his odyssey just began. I mean, it took a long journey for him to find his way here to New Rochelle, but it has worked out terrifically. I remember when he was at Seton Hall, Rob Jackson, one of the uh, assistant coaches with the, uh, the Spurs, him and I were at practice one day, and we were marveling at Glover because we couldn't get over this timing, how quick he got to the rim, how quick he was able to maneuver on defense.
Here come the Gales. Lob it up from Momo Jones to Mike Lover. Belvano. Instead, he decided to play his college basketball for Luke Carnesecca at St. John's. And that was Dee's mentality. Coach Belvano wanted to go get those players from a higher level and bring them to Iona. But it was Timmy Clouse, it was Jeff Rulin, Glenn Vickers, Dave Brown. Out of the timeout, Ryder gets a good look, but Gadsden could not knock it down. So far, Iona has made 12 field goals and has 11 assists. And that is something that Tim Kloos addressed his team about, that even though they lead the nation in assists per game, the assists have been going down as the season has gone on. And he took that as a sign that not only do we have to get the tempo up, we gotta pass better, we gotta look for each other better. Well, his mantra is share the ball, and they do a great job of doing that. But when you get into league play, there are no more secrets anymore. All of these teams do a great job of scouting. They know strengths and weaknesses, and they wanna take away your strengths. Traveling violation against Thompson. And I asked both Scott Machado and Momo Jones about what their coach had told them, and they both agreed with what you said, that defenses are so much different in conference than when you're playing a Denver or down in Puerto Rico when Purdue doesn't have any tape to look at you, when you can get out and run perhaps a little bit easier. That's exactly right. And again, what you're doing is you have staff that are just picking apart every film that they can get a hand on, and so that you're constantly working on tendencies. Ryder has numbers if it hurries. Bad pass by Gatson. Momo Jones straight to the tip. Eastern on ESPN. You get ready for the day in college basketball with College Game Day covered by State Farm. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, Digger Phelps, Hubert Davis, and Bob Knight will preview the day's games and deliver analysis, the latest news, and more. College Game Day live from Pittsburgh, where 21st ranked Louisville will take on the Panthers, 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Daniel Stewart strong to the bucket. And when they need it the most, that bucket comes up big. We talked about the liability. Stewart was the guy that finished for him in there. Mitchell was on the baseline, so Iona will keep it. By the way, those are the first two points of the night for Daniel Stewart, who is Ryder's scoring leader on the year at over 13 per game. But it came at a big time. One of the things you got to be careful, especially if you're Mitchell, watch that overpound in that basketball. It's going to get you in trouble against a team like Iona that have great hands. Armand shoots an air ball. Eddie Mitchell back into the game, the freshman at the point for the Bronx. This Ryder team began the season by losing 10 of 11. They have rewrited the ship since, trying to hang on for dear life here tonight against Iona. On that rebound, the Zouvre and Armand came together. Armand is hurting a bit. His shooting hand is hurting him. His hand or his wrist as Momo Jones puts it in. Well, Armand has a broken finger on his left hand that he's playing through right now. Jones lines it up and buries it. Jones has got his honey hole on that left side of the court. Machado with the answer. Final 30 seconds of the half that has now become more of an Iona half in terms of tempo. And this is what they do. They get you running with it. One of the things Jimmy Patzos mentioned, who was just here over the weekend, his goal was to try to keep scoring with Iona. But it didn't work out that way because he was relatively low scoring. But he didn't want to give Iona that edge. Final 10 seconds. Mitchell splits the double team. Tough shot. And he will head to the free throw line. Chris Allen, Shannon, and his first team. 
Momo's had a great half so far. He's really going wherever he wants with the ball. Between him and Machado, they've been a nice combination. There he finds him. Machado squares it up. Bang. Yeah, they have worked so well this year together. One of the hardest things about coaching period is trying to meld all these different personalities and make them play together. It's a lot easier said than done, especially when you've got talented guys with pretty good size egos. But these guys have played great. Eddie Mitchell knocking down Ryder's first two free throws of the game. Machado will be the trigger man. Here is our start of the season Iona did in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where they lost their opener to Purdue 91-90, and then they were just equally outstanding in blowing out Western Michigan and then blowing out Maryland as Taj Ridley is fouled on his dunk attempt. And during that tournament, Iona was getting approximately 25 fast break opportunities per game. And that's what Coach Kloos wants to get back to. Against Loyola the last time out, it was down to nine. So here tonight, they've ticked it back up. Well, and it's interesting, because you bring that up. Going back to Timmy Kloos' philosophy, and we go back to his high school coach, Frank Mars. This is what they did. They wanted to get that ball out, and they wanted to go, because they're constantly attacking. And what happens is, when you have a team like this that's built for that, it's consistent with how they play. And when they do, they're operating on all cylinders, and all 15 of these guys become a confident bunch. There you see some of the good wins in the non-conference part of the schedule. Still have the Bracket Busters game upcoming, and Iona is guaranteed a home game and as it's going right now they are the third highest amongst the home teams in the RPI so uh, almost assuredly they'll get a television game and quite likely they'll get an opportunity to beat one more good non-conference team and when you're in conference play so Ryder and both Iona right now this is all about one thing and that's getting to the postseason you know when you look at Iona's schedule they've done a lot of great things but the reality is it's about getting into postseason and the sure way to do that is one be the best team in the conference, and you're guaranteed into the NIT. The second thing is, you win that conference tournament, and you're going into the NCAA tournament. And so, even for both these teams right now, that's what's in the back of their minds every day. Well, Tommy Dempsey says, you know, even if at this point we're not going to be able to contend for the regular season title, we still have enough pieces that if we continue to get better through the rest of the month of January and through February, we want to be dangerous at the tournament. It's all about momentum and getting it, especially at the end. It doesn't matter when you get it. If you can gain some momentum, you're going to be okay in this league. Well, all the momentum is Momo Jones and the Iona Gales here tonight. Momo makes it an 18-point lead. This is what's so hard when you're playing against the Gales. When they've got you like this, now all of a sudden people are looking, hey, how do we get back in this thing? Certain guys have to step up, but you don't want to just take quick shots. You're in trouble. Penn, nice job to knock down the shot. Six points for the senior from Philadelphia. Quick answer at the other end. That is what the Gales do. They come right back at you. Kevin Baggett, the great coach. It works with Tommy Dempsey, played at St. Joe's. He really likes Penn. He said when this team needed someone to step up, Penn was the guy. And when you're a senior like that, you know, they needed someone to step, and he made those decisions for them. Shot clock was only three seconds old, and Momo was hoisting. They don't even need a shot clock right here. They never shell. Well, that was one thing. Did the games in Puerto Rico to start the year with the ESPN analyst, Doug Gottlieb, the former great point guard at uh, Oklahoma State. He just marveled at how quickly Iona got the ball into the front court. That two or three seconds in, and Machado was already past the timeline. Well, what's interesting when you watch these gals, when they do get the ball, they outlet that thing to half court. And they do it by the pass. Where a lot of guys want to over dribble, there it goes again. Well, strong that time for Jones. And short. Machado, what a look. Jones, up to 18 points. That would be assist number nine, if you're keeping track, for Machado. Here come the Gales again. They are relentless. 
Ridley could not catch up with the pass. Machado is looking for a foul call that he's not going to get. It's too bad by Machado. He was right. He got caught up in the timing. But watch the eyes of Machado. He's surveying everything. Bang. And him and Momo have something going on right now where he just connects. It's like a sixth sense when you watch guards like Machado. Their eyes are constantly rotating, almost like a marlin looking for more food out there. And when he sees someone, he can strike on a dime. Stewart and a foul against Iona. It's Machado picks up the personal. Second foul against Machado, first here in the second half against the Gales. Foul before the inbound, and this one goes against Glover. Foul number two on the senior power forward. This is one of the things if you're Tommy Dempsey, you always want your team to come out of the locker room, especially the first four minutes, and see what they've got. Give a good effort and kind of, you know, you try to cut into a lead. You don't want to get stuck 7-0. So it's 14 to 21. And it's the floater. Machado leaves for Ridley. Bad break by Gatson. He did a nice job to save the ball off the knee of the Zubre, but the ball ricocheted back off of his midsection, and so Iona catches a break. Sometimes it's Murphy's Law. I think a lot of coaches feel that way when they're playing against these guys. Kyle Smythe. Nice drop off for Stewart. A dime by Eddie Mitchell. Glover will check in at the next stoppage of play. Machado. Give him that much room, he can knock it down. Well, one of the things that was interesting watching that defensive possession by Ryder. Hey, you got to have your hands up in this, fellas. Now, what gets lost, perhaps, in his ability to set up others is the fact that he shoots a 40% clip from beyond the three-point line. Scott Machado showing that range right there. Worn the glasses on the court. Hasn't shown the guys the glasses yet, but uh, that day will come. But he is thrilled now that he knows what the problem was. He tweeted yesterday, boy, I love these glasses. Can't wait for the contacts to come. That's amazing because he throws as nice a pass as anyone I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I wish I could be so vision impaired. Well, General Patton used to say this all the time, you know, we will attack and attack and attack until we are exhausted. Then we shall attack some more. When you think about Machado, that's the floor general that Patton would love because that's all he does is attack. Relentless. Jeff Jones back into the ball game. Here comes Machado again. Those eyes working. Machado nearing another double-double. You see 10 points, 9 assists, and a chance for a three-point play. What I love about that was, too, here comes Machado, and again, his eyes are all over his head. And the best part was he got it from Smythe. Again, these guys on Iona can find Machado because they know good things are going to happen every time he has that basketball. And if you're a defender there like Anthony Miles, you've got to be thinking he's going to pass, right? I mean... You obviously can't leave him alone, but you've got to be thinking he's giving this ball up. If you're a defender in that situation, you don't want to be anywhere near this guy because you know what? Again, he passed Rory Grimes, one of the all-time assist leaders here at Iona, but he just makes too many good plays, and it's a bad situation when you're left alone seeing him come down the floor on you. 63-40 Iona. We talked earlier that this is the ninth road game here for the Ryder Bronx. And one of the things Tommy was hoping to do is, hey, we've got a pretty good team. We just got to iron out some kinks. But how can we finish this on the right note?
something. Guys on the run and you're throwing it from a distance. And Sherm would do it from midcourt. Big alley -oop, it's amazing. Machado, it's a feel as well. It's almost a touch. It definitely is a touch. Did you ever get called for a technical after hanging on the rim team? I got called for a boatload of technicals. <laughs> but you were nailed to the floor when you got them. It's a, my dementia sets in every now and then. So <laughs> the answer is yes. I was up there swinging a little bit. Well, there you see some of the elite company in the history of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Alvin Cruz, Jared Jordan, who was drafted second round. And Scott Machado has the attention of NBA scouts. Some folks are projecting him to be a lottery pick this coming spring. That remains to be seen, but he continues to lead the nation in assists per game. Brandon Penn misses. Machado the rebound. Eyes up. Desouvre, nice pass to Smythe. Tip off. Their energy has been great, but the Gales have given them a lot of pop for this one. Southpaw finds the range. Machado into Glover. Gets the shot blocked, and it goes out of bounds. Iona will keep it. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Machado, by the way, very near to coming up with a triple-double. He needs only two more rebounds to get that rare statistical milestone. Smythe, catch and shoot. There's another assist. Well, Tommy Dempsey's got to be beside himself right now. It's one of these things when you're playing the Gales. You know their shooters are popping out to those corners. Jones with a three of his own. And this is what you want right now, especially if you're a Tommy Dempsey rider. You want to make sure your team is coming back and responding and fighting. And whether it's defensively, you know, making these guys work harder. Kazuvre, no. Machado in his attempt to get his ninth rebound. Knocked it out of bounds. And the Bronx get the basketball back. You know, battling on the glass. And again, you've got a lot of new guys out there. You know, this is Jones's first year. Although it's that time of the year where with only 10 to 15 games remaining, you would think that those initial growing pains might be a thing of the past or, or not so much, Tim? Well, I think it's always a chemistry issue. You're trying to find out what guys play well together. Certain guys have tendencies. And you can go all season long trying to find out which is the right crew that works together. A contested three with the shot clock down to one is off the mark, but there's Fortuna putting the basket. And he now has Ryder back within 23. Fortuna out of Roman Catholic High School in Philly. Great Speedy Morris, former coach in this league, used to be LaSalle. Felt a tremendous sense of family responsibility. And that kept him very close to home. I mean, all of his jobs, whether it was in basketball or out, on Long Island, near his mom, near his surviving siblings, to try and keep the family together. And then all the while, he kept his basketball career going, and now he has gotten his Division One opportunity and seized it. No question about that. And when you think about it, his other brother and his sister, they're over involved with kids, and he says working with them and sharing this game with them, that keeps their, their image alive. But when you think about that family, and you think about growing up in the metropolitan area, if you were recruited by St. John's, you had to go because they were the creme de la creme. And to have that many brothers, again, coming out of St. Agnes and Malloy, it's amazing. There you see Tim, who played two years at St. John's and then one year at Hofstra, transferring closer to home. And he, to this day, wears Greg's old NIT watch, his brother's old watch. 
but hasn't kept time in years. And he also wears a pin on his lapel that we'll show you in a moment. It's half of a charm that reads, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are apart from another, or one another. And the other half of that pin rests inside Kevin's suit in his casket. So it's not just in his memory. He keeps his brother's memories alive. Is Iona Gales in complete control here tonight. Machado drops it off to Glover. On the reverse. 13 points for Mike Glover. Pen goes to the reverse. We're talking about Tim Flus, you know, and you can speak to this certainly as a former assistant coach and head coach at Fairfield, Tim. You always try to create a family atmosphere as a coach and with your staff and with your players, and that is certainly a big part of the equation for Tim Flus here at Iona. Well, family is a purpose, and basketball is one of those games, too, where it provides a lot of hope, and I think they find that in sharing with the Clues family, and this Gale team obviously plays with it. And the guy at the helm is Machado. Again, a guy that went to Tim Clues for high school before Tim left uh, St. Mary's. In terms of the love of family, love of basketball. And, and this is the first time he has taken a job off of Long Island. You know, he was, as you mentioned, the head coach at St. Mary's for a long time. Then finally went and uh, moved to the college ranks. And then winds up coming here to Iona last year. And he has, as you see, won more than 70% of his ball games. Now, it's amazing, but Timmy is one of those guys too, and you see the guys he's passed, whether it's Timmy Welsh or V or, or Pat Kennedy. But when you grow up in the metropolitan area, basketball was a way of life, and his family exemplified that. And when you think about even his coaching and, and being in this area, recruiting these types of kids, basketball always meant more to the city kids. And all of his brothers were drafted. I mean, they were pros. Once again, Machado to Glover. But all the while for Tim Cluse, even when he wasn't in basketball, he was a cop for three years on Long Island. He owned a bar restaurant for a decade, but it was always near home while he was taking care of his family. Off the turnover, here comes Kyle Smythe. Drop it for Glover. 17 points now as the preseason player of the year in the back heats it up. And this is a tough situation right now if you're Tom Dempsey. Again, you knew you were coming into this thing limping a little bit. You don't want your team to get blown out of here. But the other side of the coin is you're still trying to put this thing together. And you're trying to root for and find different things that might work. Miles. And you're looking for those little nooks and crannies for like Miles coming off that jumper. Could be Jones getting hot here at the end. But one of the things, especially for Ryder right now, even in his last eight minutes, you want to make sure your hands up, you're bouncing, and you're active. Smite. Nothing but net. Well, this Iona team, with all of the weapons around the perimeter, plus Mike Glover inside, as you've talked about, Tim, you really have to pick your poison. And at some point, somebody's going to be open. They really are. When you've got a guy like Machado, the thing that's most impressive about this Iona team is just how unselfish they are. And you have no time to get your head down because guys like Machado will find and push it. Machado, 14 assists so far tonight. His career high, 16, which came earlier this season. As mentioned, he started the year with back-to-back -back 15 assist performances. So just another night at the office for Scott Machado. Jenkins. There's another one of the weapons. Right, if you think about it, Armand was the guy that was hotter than a firecracker in the first half. We haven't even called his name this half. Nope. And you've got Smythe and Jenkins, who Tim came into this game, tied for third all-time in school history in three-point shots made. Tough shot for Miles. Zouvre clears the rebound, and here come the Gales once again. Jenkins again. Offers from Duke, from Kansas, from Kentucky, from Memphis, from Texas A&M, UCLA, USC, and on and on and on. Foul 
Don Glover. Machado is on the bench. And perhaps Glover and Machado all in double figures, as is Armand and Smythe. So five different Iona players in double digits with 7.04 remaining. When you think of Ryder, you're talking about a team that's won over 90 games in the last five years. I believe it's 98. So they're a team that's accustomed to winning. Smythe. Glover working the offensive glass. Spins into the defense, and Stewart is going to be called for the foul. Well, Mike Glover is somebody who the NBA scouts have kept their eye on. He had a prolific junior season here at Iona and is a candidate for All-Americans, certainly. And he would love nothing more than to follow the path of Jason Thompson, former Ryder Bronx, by the way, into the NBA. He was a lottery pick a few years back and uh, is back into the starting lineup these days with the Sacramento Kings and uh, playing very, very well. And Mike Glover would love to be that rare guy from a mid-major to follow Jason Thompson to the league. Absolutely. When you think about this league, you're, you're talking about guys like that that can come in and put up big numbers and put up them right away. And when you think about the Jason Thompson of the world, you know, this is what Glover's come in. He's come in and he's done this consistently night in and night out. And so people are watching. Dira Andy Azuma into the ball game. He missed on the jump hook. 6-12 remaining in regulation. Iona with the basketball on top, 85-59. Smythe to Glover. Perimeter guy, but Glover's interior field goal percentage is outstanding. With guys in the NBA, if people are going to pay you to be a professional, they're expecting you to put up consistent numbers night in, night out for 82 games, and Glover has shown his consistency. And Glover was on the Wooden Award preseason watch list, the Naismith Player of the Year watch list, on and on and on. Nice use of the window by Mitchell. Coach Dempsey really likes Mitchell. He's one of these guys he thinks he's nice and tough. He's going to grow and emerge and evolve into this program. Again, Tommy's done an unbelievable job at Ryder. By the way, Machado is back into the game. And so he can add to his total of 14 assists. But when you're playing against Iona and a Tim Clues team, you got to understand one thing. Tim Clues is going to, they're going to do what they do. And their job is to score points. And they're not going to stop at 100. They're going to try to get to 120, 140. And I go back to Frank Morris, his high school coach. This is what those guys did. This is what a, a big mentor to Timmy in shaping his philosophy was Coach Morris. Well, certainly Iona knows what it's like to get to the century mark. Back in November, they went for 104 in a double overtime win over St. Joe's, then scored 100 the next game in a win over Long Island. And then they did it again, triple digits, earlier this month at Marist in beating the Red Foxes 100-76. to And in this 10 o'clock start here tonight, they certainly have an opportunity if they can score another 13 points in the final five minutes. Because Timmy's not even aware of the score right now. He's watching what they're doing officially on offense. He's watching who's moving, who's cut, whose hands are ready for the Jones takes a seat. Gets a nice round of applause from the student body here in New Rochelle. Well, talking about uh, guys from this league who went on to play in the NBA, Sean Green is the last Iona Gale back in the early mid-90s. Played a couple of years at the Indiana Pacers, and he's a young man who when you were an assistant coach here Tim O'Toole he played for you he was phenomenal when you I was thinking about this as the 25th anniversary of the three-point shot your mind starts racing back to former Mac moments and I'll never forget his senior year when we were playing at Siena and Siena was great Mike Dean was coaching but rise Sean Green hit a three from half court to win the game and it was just one of those things where the Pepsi arena back then went silent but Sean was an unbelievable player I was on the radio call for that game, and uh, that was one of the classics, like you mentioned, in the history of this league. Tom Herter for Siena hit a desperation heave from, he says now, I think 30 feet, that bounced three times off the back iron before going through. Another great three-point shooter was Tommy Herter. Kevin Houston was another guy that led the nation in scoring that played at West Point. 
digs Moikobu into the ball game, turns it over. Well, you have been around the Mac as long as anybody. It's uh, just over 30 years old, and as a player and as a, an assistant coach, longtime head coach, and now here on the television broadcast. Well, I remember when it was a league of just six teams when it started out. That's when I was playing. And it added a few, lost a few, added a few more. And Ryder is in its 15th year in this league. But Iona dates all the way back. Well, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> but Gadsden was able to knock down the shot. Now, you know, you see a guy like Gadsden, and again, he had the micro fracture knee surgery, so he's been hobbled. You know, but like anything else, with every new season comes new responsibilities. And that was one of the things Tommy mentioned, that, hey, this team still has to find those guys. Gadsden, he wants to do it, but he doesn't have a lot of lift anymore because of the knee surgery. There's some lift for you. Danny Stewart. <laughs> Yet to reach double figures, but he's got 14 assists, two off his career high. And 11 points. If indeed he is able to get to the triple-double, he will only become the second Iona Gale behind Nakia Miller to have gone triple-double. Nakia Miller played for Jeff Rulin. Excellent big man. Great personality. We've seen him here a couple of times since uh, getting done with school, and he's always got a big smile on his face, comes over and says hello. He should. I think he had 15 blocks against the Fairfield <laughs> team I coached. Was his triple-double with block shots? It, it very could have been against the house. <laughs> Indeed it was. 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 11 block shots, but that was against Canisius, not against your Fairfield Stags coach. Thank God. <laughs> Machado misses that time. Ridley tries to save, but can't do it. Two minutes remaining. Charles Oliver, a freshman from Scotch Plains, New Jersey, has come off the rider bench. He's number 11 in Cranberry. And yes, those are Cranberry jerseys. Mitchell with a two-point shot. Well, Iona will improve to 7-1 in the match and maintain sole possession of its coach interviews and live reports from a campus near you. ESPNU is your home for National Signing Day. Find out where the stars of tomorrow will play Wednesday, February 1st at 9 a.m. Eastern. Scott Machado still out there with Momo Jones, Kyle Smythe, and Mike Glover. As mentioned, Trinity Fields, a 6'2 senior from Queens, doesn't get a lot of playing time, playing the final minute and a half or so. Three to shoot. Momo Jones. Been one of those nights for Momo. And right now, you're Todd Dempsey and you're the Ryder Bronx. What you're just hoping to do is finish this thing up and go get ready for Kenesha. Because in this league, you have quick turnaround, and all you want to do is keep building momentum. By, by the way, Tim, on that inbound pass, that was assist number 15. So the fourth time this year, Scott Machado has reached that threshold. Hey! Nakia Miller as the only triple-double, but again, the big number, 15 assists for the nation's leader in assists. That average goes up once again. Glover steals the ball and lays it in. <laughs> 21 points for Mike Glover, 24 Momo Jones. Five different Gales are in double figures. <laughs> There is Scott Machado, our 
Pepsi Max player of the game. This is the time of year when his coach, Tim Kloos, was telling me earlier today that he wants his seniors, like Machado, like Mike Glover, to take ownership of the team. You know, the coaches try to set the table early in the year, but the best teams typically are led by their senior and junior leaders. And this Iona roster certainly blessed with plenty of talent among the upperclassmen. And it's a process that the Gales hope will continue as we head towards March. Miles has had a solid game in what will be a losing effort. 14 points to lead the Bronx. Jeff Jones also into double figures off the bench for Ryder, but in a losing cause. The game was tied at